So we're here at the City of London Cemetery, uh, which was opened by the Corporation of the City of London in 1856. Um, that acquired the cemetery uh, a few years earlier to provide a new burial ground for the residents of the Square Mile, which is where most people lived at that time. So in the early part of the 19th century, um, the churchyards in, in the city were becoming overcrowded. Um, the idea was, of course, that you would be buried in the churchyard and then after maybe 50 years, um, somebody else would be buried there. It was called reuse. They reused the graves over and over again. Well, of course, as the population grew and the number of deaths grew, this capacity in the city just wasn't able to cope with the number of bodies that had to be buried. And it got to absolutely appalling conditions where bodies were being disturbed within a matter of weeks of being buried. And of course it became a scandal and an outrage and a public nuisance. People believed that the miasma of uh, gases that came from the cemeteries were killing people, yeah. poisoning your food in your larder. And so there was this big rush to try and say, well, let's close the churchyards, let's create new cemeteries outside the city, uh, and then we'll all be better off. Hence, this great cemetery was constructed. Ian, we are uh, now above the catacombs. Can you tell us the history of this part of the City of London Cemetery? Certainly. Well, this area was originally uh, a lake, and in fact, uh, we know it as Catacomb Valley. And when you actually enter the cemetery, originally, you could see all the way from the main gate right the way down to the lake, the end of the lake. And uh, the architect of the cemetery, William Hayward, decided that this would be the centrepiece of the cemetery. The idea was, was to be really impressive and, uh, and it is indeed quite an impressive building in keeping with all of the other historic buildings all designed in a neo-gothic style. And in fact the centrepiece is the catacomb where people are, about, are buried above ground in cells and the, each end has been converted into a columbarium which is the same thing but for urns which stand in niches above, okay, above ground. I um, so this lake was actually drained as part of the preparations for building the cemetery and then in 1974 they added this modern building which is the crematorium. Um, bit of a problem because obviously it now takes away the main vista which you were meant to get when you yes, came into yeah, the entrance right, yes. and see the yeah. great... Uh, yeah. In fact one of the original gravings show as you come into the cemetery a big open area and in the distance you can see the catacomb. Mm. It's interesting that an area that was, once was a, a place of leisure is now a place of sorrow and remembrance and respect. Well, it's interesting you say that because the architect of the cemetery was designing this as a place of pleasure. It wasn't just meant to be a place to bury the dead uh, and to mourn. No, it was, in fact, it was meant to be an open space where if you look at the original engravings, you will see people walking for leisurely walks with their children, mm. enjoying a yes. Sunday afternoon. I understand. That was the intention. Mm. Yes, yes. It was meant to be um, a place where you appreciated architecture, nature, trees, mm. the whole, everything really to do with life, not just death. Yes, and even in autumn, as with now, it still works, doesn't it? It does, and there are over 3,000 trees in this cemetery, um, and every sort of variety you can think of. Mm. It is um, a, a wonderful park where people are buried. 